Mr Speaker, through the North Sea transition deal, the oil and gas industry has committed to early targets uh, for offshore production emissions reductions, with 10 per cent reductions by 2025, 25 per cent by 2027, and 50 per cent reductions by 2030, setting out the path to achieve a net zero basin by 2050. But does my honourable friend agree with me that whilst the net zero challenge is the greatest challenge of our generation, nevertheless to keep energy bills down and to keep our energy security, we must make best use of our oil and gas resources? Here, here. Obviously, the answer lies with renewables. Uh, but it also makes no sense for us to increase imports of volatile priced fossil fuels which come to us with higher embedded emissions. That is exactly why we have the North Sea transition deal, not to close down the industry, but to work with the sector to make the transition to the net zero future that we all signed up to. I welcome our right honourable friend's response and this government's ongoing commitment and support of the UK oil and gas uh, sector and their role to drive forward the energy transition to net zero. But will my right honourable friend join me in welcoming yesterday's High Court ruling to throw out claims by uh, certain environmental activists that UK government support uh, for the industry was unlawful? We welcome yesterday's judgment. Uh, I, probably like he, wonder if the SNP and the Scottish Green uh, government in Edinburgh would also share our welcome. Uh, there is going to be an ongoing need for oil and gas as we reduce demand uh, amid the transition to lower carbon energy, which is, in the end is the solution. And I know from my visit to his constituency just last month how also important renewables are for delivery uh, in his constituency of Bamford Bucket.